confusion anterior scoliosis correction surgery, a novel promising modality for the treatment of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. Time-tested traditional spinal fusion is considered the gold standard for the surgical treatment of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. However, certain studies show that an increased risk of decreased spinal growth over the length of fusion construct, decreased spinal mobility, adjacent disc degeneration, back pain with the, in the long term with spinal fusion. Surgical treatment of idiopathic scoliosis has experienced some innovations in the recent years, especially as regards to the treatment of the bovine spine. Non-fusion anterior scoliosis correction is a new revolutionary motion preserving treatment for adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. Non-fusion anterior scoliosis surgery is classified as growth modulating option in which the spinal column continues to grow in a harmonious way. Vertebral body tether modulates the spine growth according to the uter workman principle, thus providing additional progressive spontaneous correction, utilizing the remaining growth potential. Fewer existing clinical studies evaluating the novel anterior vertebral body tethering in skeletally immature children have questioned the midterm efficacy with concerns of overcorrection and curve progression and return to the theater or conversion to spinal spinal standard fusion surgery. The great advantage of non-fusion anterior scoliosis surgery is that it is not irreversible as it does not induce spinal fusion. It can be revised with spinal fusion in case of an unfavorable outcome with no downside for the patient. Non-fusion anterior scoliosis correction surgery differs from the traditional vertebral body tethering in that it relies more on intra translational and derotational maneuvers instead of merely tensioning the band during correction. We hypothesize that non-fusion anterior scoliosis correction surgery offers significant fusionless correction and stabilization of curve progression in patients with adolescent idiopathic scoliosis with the low risk of perioperative and postoperative complications. The main aim of our study was to investigate the safety and efficacy of this novel non-fusion anterior scoliosis correction technique in the surgical treatment of patients with adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. This is a prospective course study. We enrolled 45 patients with a minimum follow-up of one year. Adolescent idiopathic scoliosis patients with a structural measure curve between 14 and 80 degree having more than 50% of flexibility on dynamic X-ray. We collected data regarding skeletal maturity, curve type, cob angle, surgical details, including blood loss, duration of surgery, and SRS-22 questionnaire. We followed up patient with serial measurements of the cob angle, sagittal alignment measurement, and SRS questionnaire. This is the implants used for the surgery. This is three-pound staples. This is titanium mesh coated screw with blunt tip for bicortical purchase. This is non-threaded locking cap. This is the tether material, which is made up of the polyethylene teratolet. Teraptalate, and this is the MIS compression with crystal group, which is used for intra tensioning of the tether cord. Coming to the results, the mean age of the patients was 14.9 years, majority 19.5% of the patients were female with a mean follow up of 24 months. The mean Sanders and Riser scores were 7.15 and 4.2, respectively. We divided the patients according to the linkage classification. Majority 42.22% of patients were of type 5 linkage and 35% of patients were type 1 linkage. And five patients each divided into type 3 and type 6 linkage. The operative data included duration of the surgery as mean duration is 162 minutes, estimated mean blood loss was 112 ml, and mean radiation exposure of 0.6 centigrade, mean radiation exposure time was 8 seconds, and the mean number of instrumented vertebra was 7. Coming to the radiological measurements, the mean main thoracic corpse angle preoperatively was 52%, which corrected to 17.2 on the first grade film and 16.92 on the most recent field, achieving a correction of 68 percentage with a p-value of less than 0 0.01, which is statistically significant. The mean thoracolumbar and lumbar corpse angle was 51.45, which corrected on first erect film to 13.48 degree, and in most recent film, it got corrected to 14.24, achieving a correction of 72 percent, which is also statistically significant. The mean pre-op SRS score was 78, and post-op SRS score was 92.5, with a p-value of less than 0.05. This is the case of 14-year-old girl with riser 5 and Sanders 7 presented with Lenke 5 cm. Preoperative radiograph shows a cob angle of 51.4 degree. Shows a B figure shows immediate post-op erect radiograph cob with a cob measuring of 28 degree, achieving 46% of correction. At two-year follow-up, the angle corrected, cob angle corrected to 18 point. Five, achieving a further 33% of correction. This is another case of 14-year-old girl with a riser 5 and Sanders 7 presented with Lenke 5 cm. Preoperative radiograph shows a cob angle of 43.1. B figure shows immediate post-op erect radiograph with cob measuring 12 degrees. One year follow-up, it corrected to 11.3 degrees, and two years follow-up, it got corrected to 6.1 degrees, achieving a total of 85% of correction. On discussion, the study evaluates radiological and clinical outcomes of non-fusion anterior scoliosis correction surgery in patients with adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. 
Our early results with the novel non-fusion anterosclerosis correction technique demonstrates significantly higher curl correction in the immediate post-op and progressive curl correction at two years follow-up. Non-fusion anterosclerosis correction offers promising curl correction and stabilization of curl progression with low risk of complication, particularly with regard to the long-term impact on unfused segment with preservation of the spinal mobility and decreased risk of the adjacent level disc disease. There was no any complication, no patient demonstrated worsening of the deformity, quad breakage, implant failure or necessity for revision surgery or conversion to fusion at the latest follow-up. The exact role of the non-fusion anterior correction surgery in the management of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis remains limited, particularly with regard to the specific surgical indications, post-operative lung function, quality of life scores. Yet, the data presented here provides the additional support for the surgical procedure. This is a review of some published clinical studies on non-fusion anterior surgery. Our study uh, data matches with the uh, existing literature. Last year, we have published a series of 10 patients with a mean follow-up of 24.1 month. We achieved a correction of 71 uh, percentage with no complications. The limitations of this study were small sample size, lack of control group, and not objectively measuring the spinal range of motion. Coming to the conclusion, we conclude that our preliminary experience with the novel non-fusion anterioscoliosis surgery as an alternative technique to fusion to stabilize progressive adolescent idiopathic scoliosis curve is promising, but it has to stand the test of the time. Long-term outcome of large series documenting the ideal candidate for surgery, ideal curve characteristics, ideal timing for the surgery, and required magnitude of intraoperative curve correction will be critical for this novel technique to reduce the reoperation rate and conversion to fusion surgery. Thank you. Thank you.